The following program contains explicit calls for clear thinking. If you suffer from emotionalism, Randall may not be right for you. Check with your romance novelist. Speaking the truth when others hold their tongues. Wrestling for justice with left-wingers and crocodiles. Resisting the temptation to keep the peace at any price. The only talk show host who writes his own theme music, Randall Terry. Made it. Some of my friends from the peaceful religion of Islam Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Voice of Resistance. It is I, your servant, Randall Terry. What a show we've got for you today. Did we elect a messianic monarch? We're going to read some letters from children crying out to Obama to be both savior and dictator. And is Obama the reincarnation of a fallen dictator? No, no, I'm not talking about Hitler. Take a guess who it is. We've got photos that show it. And I'm going to tell you a little story that happened to a member of my staff and I yesterday when we went to a gun store to just do a little test and see what happened if we tried to purchase a perfectly legal firearm. It will send shutters down your spine. That and so much more in today's program. But first, a word of wisdom from Jihad Granny. You must know how evil those dogs, the Jews, were in Muhammad, he slice off their heads. And for that, we Muslims are very and eternally grateful. Muhammad, the man of peace. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Voice of Resistance. Did we elect a messianic monarch? Well, according to some children, we might have. In case you haven't heard, the White House released a bunch of letters that were sent to the White House, to President Obama, with children begging him to do something. I'd like to read, uh, by the way, this was all choreographed, it was all staged. These letters were given just to the Associated Press, who then, following the orders of the President, released them to the public so that we could wring our eyes and say yes, We must follow the children. The children have the wisdom. A small child shall lead them as the Bible says. Let me read to you some of these. This comes from Grant, who's 11 years old. It's a free country, but I recommend there needs to be a limit with guns. Please don't let people own machine guns or other powerful guns like that. How about this one? from Tajia, who's eight years old. I am writing to ask you to stop gun violence. I am very sad about the children who lost their lives. So I thought I would write to you to stop gun violence. And then finally from Julia. I know that laws have to be passed by Congress, but I beg you to try very hard to make guns not allowed, not just for me, but for the whole United States. My love and regrets, Julia, 11 years old. Now, first of all, God bless these children, really and truly. They will do psychological studies for years to come on the impact of these killings on children. There are parents who are reporting that the kids in Connecticut who go to that school and nearby schools are clinging to their parents, asking to sleep with their parents, bedwetting. So this segment in no way is meant to denigrate the emotional trauma that children are going through who are aware of these horrific crimes. And by the way, Want to put in one more plug again? Homeschool your kids. The socialization is incredible. No one gives them drugs. 
No one gives them pornography. No one gives them condoms. And no one shoots at them. But anyway, back on point. The White House deliberately chose, perhaps from hundreds or thousands of letters, the words that they would release. And look at how carefully crafted these words are. And in case you didn't know it, these, some of these children are going to be the ones that you'll be seeing with Obama in the picture. As Obama starts to release his executive orders, he's going to surround himself by children, giving away the tip about the failed dictator. Anyway, look at, look at some of these words. I know this is a free country, but there needs to be a limit. So I, as a small boy, am, am willing to give away some freedoms if you'll just please stop people from having machine guns and other guns like that. Again, this is playing to the semi-automatic assault rifle. If it looks like a machine gun, it must be a machine gun. Do you know how few people in this country have fully automatic machine guns? It's minuscule because it's so expensive and cumbersome. The paperwork, the fees, the licensing, the background check. So as we've gone over again and again, an assault rifle can be the one that's killing you. A 270, a shotgun, all right? The look isn't what matters, but by, playing, by using this quote, they're playing to the imagery. Or this one, I'm asking you, you, President Obama, to stop gun violence. I thought I would write to you to stop gun violence. So here, Obama gets to stand and say, Congress won't act, but the children have asked me to act. And so I, without congressional approval, and prepared to act and even trample the Second Amendment underfoot because I have heard the cries of the children. This one. I know that laws have to be passed by Congress, but to hell with Congress. <laughs> oh, no, they didn't say that. That's just what's implied. I know laws have to be passed by Congress, but I beg you to try very hard to make guns illegal, not just for me, but for the whole United States. I'm going to talk a little bit more when I come back about this, but let me just give you one simple word to describe all of this. Are you ready? Despicable. No, there's a word that I want to add with it. Obscene. It's despicably obscene what he is doing as he uses these children. I'll be right back. Who is that failed dictator? And I want to tell you what happened with me and one of the members of my staff when we went to buy a perfectly legal firearm. I'll be right back. Randall, Lewis, and Clark were on the expedition, and most of the nights they played poker, with Lewis losing most of the time. On one of those occasions, he said to Randall, your name will not appear on the annals of this expedition. To which Randall replied, well, calling them barking do uh, squirrels is a silly name, and they're really prairie dogs anyway. So each guy got what he wanted. Friend, you need to get this book. We won't get fooled again. Listen to this. I came to the conclusion that most folks were left over from the Reagan area who were no longer warriors but are now either too old or unhealthy and had compromised and become comfortable with the Republican establishment. They turned these organizations pretty much into direct mail fundraising fronts and were making tons of money and living the good life in beautiful mansions. The conservative movement had transformed itself from a very dynamic, principled organization in the Reagan years to a bunch of compromising, useless, and ineffective money-making machines. I'm reading to you from the new blockbuster book, We Won't Get Fooled Again, that names names, shows organizations, shows how they say that they're Christian, but they betray Christ, they betray biblical principles in the public square, and we are funding them. Go to the website, call us on the phone, and order it today. I'll send it to you for free if you want. God bless you. Friend, you need to get this book, We Won't Get Fooled Again. Listen to this. I came to the conclusion that most folks were left over from the Reagan area, who were no longer warriors, but are now either too old or unhealthy, and had compromised and become comfortable with the Republican establishment. They turned these organizations pretty much into direct mail fundraising fronts and were making tons of money and living the good life in beautiful mansions. 
the conservative movement had transformed itself from a very dynamic, principled organization in the Reagan years to a bunch of compromising, useless, and ineffective money-making machines. I'm reading to you from the new blockbuster book, We Won't Get Fooled Again, that names names, shows organizations, shows how they say that they're Christian, but they betray Christ, they betray biblical principles in the public square, and we are funding them. Go to the website, call us on the phone, and order it today. I'll send it to you for free if you want. God bless you. You don't have to go over the hills and far away to see something good on TV. Stay tuned. There's more Randall Terry. Ah how yeah. Ow! Welcome back to the Voice of Resistance. In just a few moments, photographic proof of who Obama is the reincarnated dictator of. Look at that syntax. Oh, yeah. All right. Congressional reaction to President Obama's abuse of authority is intense to say the least and it's only going to get worse all right let me read to you a couple of them this one from representative paul brown from georgia he said the more onerous that they are the more we have a chance of having a revolt all across this country there is a tremendous potential for a horrendous public backlash against the president if he continues the policies that he has been doing of trying to go around Congress, create law, and be a dictator like he's doing. When is the last time that you heard a sitting president compare, I'm sorry, a sitting congressman compare a president to a dictator? That's how intense things are getting inside the beltway. This from Representative Steve Stockman, he said, the president's actions are an existential threat to this nation. The right of the people to keep and bear arms is what has kept this nation free and secure for over 200 years. The very purpose of the Second Amendment is to stop the government from disallowing people the means to defend themselves against tyranny. Any proposal to abuse executive power and infringe upon gun rights must be repelled with the stiffest legislative force possible. <clears throat> Listen to what I'm going to tell you. This is, a, this is a, a strategic philosophy that you can function with from now until the end of your life. The further out someone goes on the edge, on the extreme, the more they open up the middle. I had some misgivings about the way Alex Jones fought with Pierce Morgan on CNN a couple weeks back. His content was great. His form, I thought, was a little too intense. But the more I thought about it, I thought two things. One is, he's mobilizing his base. They're, they were cheering in front of that television going, yeah, tear him a new one. I hate Pierce Morgan. Go, Alex, go. Guys were jumping up and down with their beer, having a blast. So it had value at that level, but there's another place it had value. And you need to understand this in any political fight that happens for the rest of your life. The further you push out the extreme, the more you open up the middle. So when you have congressmen calling President Obama a dictator, when you have congressmen saying, the reason we have the Second Amendment is to protect ourselves from tyranny from our own government, that opens up the middle for discussion. Now those of us who want to say things of that ilk aren't extremists anymore. It's the common parlance. It's the common discussion. It's what people are talking about around the water cooler. So here's my suggestion to you. It's like a football game. When someone blocks and makes a big hole in the middle and the halfback's got the ball, Run, baby, run. Quote these congressmen. Talk to your family, your friends. Write letters to the editor. Call in to radio talk shows. Talk about it at the water cooler. Well, Congressman so-and-so said he's acting like a dictator. Congressman so-and-so explained that the reason we have the Second Amendment is to protect ourselves from tyranny in government. 
Folks, a hole is opening them up, and some of the blockers are congressmen. Use the hole, run with it. And then after a while, none of us will look extreme. All right, we've got to take a break. Who might President Obama be? What reincarnation of a fallen dictator, and no, it's not Adolf Hitler. We're gonna present what I believe is photographic proof. And I'm telling you now, it's chilling. Oh, dear children, when you grow up, you want to grow up in House of Islam, which is peace. You do not want to grow up in the house of war. Listen to Mohammed. Friend, you need to get this book. We won't get fooled again. Listen to this. I came to the conclusion that most folks were left over from the Reagan area who were no longer warriors, but are now either too old or unhealthy and had compromised and become comfortable with the Republican establishment. They turned these organizations pretty much into direct mail fundraising fronts and were making tons of money and living the good life in beautiful mansions. The conservative movement had transformed itself from a very dynamic, principled organization in the Reagan years to a bunch of compromising, useless, and ineffective money-making machines. I'm reading to you from the new blockbuster book, We Won't Get Fooled Again, that names names, shows organizations, shows how they say that they're Christian, but they betray Christ, they betray biblical principles in the public square, and we are funding them. Go to the website, call us on the phone, and order it today. I'll send it to you for free if you want. God bless you. What is the use of living if it be not to strive for noble causes and to make this muddled world a better place to live after we are gone? Sir Winston Churchill. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the voice of resistance. Is President a messianic monarch? He might think he is, but I think that the real question, the one that is vexing us back there in our cerebral cortex is this, is he a reincarnated dictator? Look at this picture of President Obama with these children. Who does it remind you of? Who might he really be? And now look, yes, Saddam Hussein, now, for those of you who are not familiar with the historical context of that picture with Saddam Hussein, let me remind you. During Gulf War I, Hussein surrounded himself with children, did a press conference saying to the Allied powers, if you want to bomb me, this is where you can find me with these children who I am using as a human shield. Saddam Hussein shielded himself with children. President Obama is shielding his tyranny, his actions, himself with children. It is obscene. What Saddam Hussein did was treacherous, manipulative. I mean, think of all the adjectives that you would like to use, dump them in. And then you can go ahead and apply each and every one of those adjectives to President Obama. I mean, think of what he's saying. I couldn't sleep at night. I had to respond to the cries of the children. But really what he's doing is he's shielding his acts with the faces and the innocence and the words of children. From where I come from, that there's the mark of a coward. You coward, President Obama. You coward. I'm going to take a break. When we come back, I'm going to tell you what happened to a member of my staff and I. I thought, you know what? Let's just go see how current background checks and gun laws are working. And I want you to know, I was not surprised. They slay the widow and the sojourner and murder the fatherless. And they say, the Lord does not see. The God of Jacob does not perceive. 
understand, O dullest of the people. Fools, when will you be wise? He who planted the ear, does he not hear? He who formed the eye, does he not see? He who chastens the nations, does he not chastise? Friend, you need to get this book. We won't get fooled again. Listen to this. I came to the conclusion that most folks were left over from the Reagan area who were no longer warriors, but are now either too old or unhealthy and had compromised and become comfortable with the Republican establishment. They turned these organizations pretty much into direct mail fundraising fronts and were making tons of money and living the good life in beautiful mansions. The conservative movement had transformed itself from a very dynamic, principled organization in the Reagan years to a bunch of compromising, useless, and ineffective money-making machines. I'm reading to you from the new blockbuster book, We Won't Get Fooled Again, that names names, shows organizations, shows how they say that they're Christian, but they betray Christ, they betray biblical principles in the public square, and we are funding them. Go to the website, call us on the phone, and order it today. I'll send it to you for free if you want. God bless you. And fell on the banks. There were battles where even the victor was a loser. Now Jimmy chose the Yankee blue. His heart was on their side. But Brother Billy joined the Rebs and how their mother cried. They both shook hands and kissed their mom. There wasn't much to say. One headed north, the other south, the blue against the gray. It was brother fighting brother, father fighting son, a war that both sides had to lose, no matter which side won. Well, folks, what did my friend and I go through? I'm going to tell you in one second. But first, this just broke, the, one of the statements from the White House on the president's executive orders, and I've got a suggestion for the president. Here's what the White House said. While no law or set of laws will end gun violence, it is clear that the American people want action. If even one child's life can be saved, then we need to act. President Obama... I suggest take a violent area of, say, Chicago, your hometown, all right? And then take two, three, four city blocks, incarcerate every single parent. Maybe a house arrest, do something, maybe a complete gun sweep with metal detectors. I mean, literally just go house to house. Pick your favorite neighborhood, President Obama. And then put an armed policeman in every house okay, to monitor the parents to keep the children safe. I bet you that violence against children at that point falls through the floor. It'll become non-existent. And listen, the American people demand action. And if we can save even one child's life, then we've got to act. Keep hiding behind the children. Why don't you do something truly heroic? truly bold, truly draconian, and do a complete sweep in incarceration of three or four city blocks to save the children. Vile cowards. All right. <clears throat> One of my staff and I decided that we would test the current background check system because you're supposed to be able to go into a federally licensed gun store and purchase a firearm. So Gary and I thought, let's test the system. We went to the gun store, met the owner, talked, laughed, did even some nice clips with him, video clips. And then we decided on a certain firearm that we would each purchase. We filled out all the paperwork. We showed the identification. This gun was sitting right there, the one that we wanted. We didn't have to order it. Simply in the store, we were prepared to pay for it and walk out with our new gun. And the, and the owner of the shop said, oh, I can get on the phone, give them your information, and boom, they'll give me approval right on the phone for you. So we did everything we were supposed to do. He got on the phone, 
And the nice person at the other end of the line said, no, put a hold on it. Could be up to five days. Now, earlier in the broadcast, I made a small joke when I came through the door about our friends in the peaceful religion of Islam. The truth of the matter is that, and this is a matter of public record, by the way, that I and several members of my staff have had fatwas issued against us so that we could be killed by the peaceful religion of Islam, all right, by the followers of the great Prophet Muhammad. <clears throat> that was a joke, by the way. So what if I really needed a firearm? I mean, I'm not telling you what firearms I may or may not already have, but what if that was the first firearm that I had ever purchased and I really needed to protect myself and my family? And I had to walk out the door just as unarmed as when I walked in. Are you hearing me? That happened under the old regime before Obama's executive order. They are encroaching on our freedom, and that means that they're encroaching on our safety. I, it happened to me, folks. It happened. The system in place is already tyrannical. Think about it.